of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'll be your host this morning. Boy, have we got a lot of ground to cover. NSA blast. Federal nullification efforts. There's a ton of news out there today. All of it revealing to the American population. Damaging to administrations globally as well as domestically. <clears throat> the headlines today, every day, seem to read like tyranny is rampant globally, but especially here in the United States. I mean, the amount of information and the amount of treason that is being unveiled on a day-in and day-out basis is absolutely stunning. Today, The Guardian does it again. Why can't our newspapers, why can't domestic papers and news outlets and the Ministry of Propaganda tell the American people what's going on? Why must we wait for a foreign paper to inform America about treason within our borders? That's almost as big a story as what the NSA is doing, isn't it? I mean, think about that for a moment. The story that the NSA is doing untold harm to individual Americans' civil liberties is almost a backseat to the fact that the United States of America doesn't have a single mass media organization that has the the chutzpah, the brass, the cojones, you, whatever you want to call it, to actually speak the truth. And instead, it's up to peons like me, in the middle of nowhere, to break information out that Americans can find. After hours of research, tons and tons of information gathering, Where's all the other talk show guys? Where's all the other news articles? Where's all the news media? Where's the TV stations? Where's the investigative reporters? Where's the journalist? Where's journalistic integrity? Doesn't exist, does it? Well, once again, The Guardian blows the top off of this thing. Two documents back from July from 2009, again, Reference the depth, the scope, and the breadth of this project. Signed by none other than Eric the Traitor Holder. Have been revealed and released by The Guardian. These two documents govern the surveillance by U.S. intelligence agencies that show the judges that have signed off on this from the FISA courts have signed off on broad orders that allow the NSA to make use of information inadvertently collected. Key operative word, inadvertently. Now, suddenly, the testimony comes into focus. The testimony that's been done before Senate and House committees, now suddenly that starts to come into focus, doesn't it, folks? Well, we, didn't, we don't mean to collect data. They know exactly what they're doing. They're parsing their words very, very, very carefully. <clears throat> the Guardian has actually published both of these documents. Signed by Eric Holder. 
if somebody doesn't charge this piece of trash with treason shortly, I don't know how much more we can take from this guy. They detail the procedures that the NSA is required to follow. And it references, you know, non-U.S. persons versus U.S. citizens. And how when international calls are made to U.S. and vice versa and how they can gather and collect data. The, the, the real issue here is that these procedures only cover part of the NSA's surveillance <clears throat> on domestic U.S. communications. And their oversight role as, as the court is basically a rubber stamp because they've given these guys so many loopholes to leap through. You know, you could, you could drive an entire state, forget a truck. You could drive a state through these loopholes. Here's, here's a couple of the loopholes they've given. They can keep data that could potentially contain details of U.S. persons for up to five years. Here, look, put your critical thinking skills on. Turn your critical thinking switch up. Tune your ears, and hear, here's some key words I want you to listen to. I'll highlight them as we go. Keep data that could potentially contain details of U.S. persons for up to five years. Well, everybody's potentially a terrorist. I mean, the fact that you're a living, breathing human being who's above ground stands to reason that you could potentially be a terrorist. Retain and make use of inadvertently acquired domestic communication. Now, they go on to even make this worse. If it contains usable intelligence information on criminal activity, threat of harm to person or property, are encrypted or are believed to contain any information relevant to cybersecurity. All right, that pretty much covers the gamut of anything and everything that could occur, and here's why. First of all, they can hold on to this domestic information inadvertently acquired if it contains usable intelligence. Well, the claim there is that anything and everything could be usable intelligence. If you mention the word Al-Qaeda in one of your emails, if you mention oh, the word bridge, if you mention the word uh, you know, mass uh, civil disobedience, okay, you're potentially put on the hook to be listened to later. In information on criminal activity. Okay, what constitutes criminal activity? I mean, at that point, you could say, well, anyone who's planning to go march on Washington and says in their email, I'm not going to follow the rules that Glenn Beck revealed yesterday in a phone call about that IRS march where this woman actually from the uh, Parks Department down there called up and said the people from Group A couldn't go talk to the people from Group B. They all had to stay in their assigned zones. What the hell are we talking about here? So that's criminal activity because you're saying... I don't care what the Park Service says. I'm going to go over there and talk to the people in Zone B. Threat of harm to person or to people or property. What I mean, I don't know what are they what constitutes a threat. This is all open to their interpretation. You follow? Here's the problem: these loopholes are so broad. It's like saying that under the NDAA we can hold people for a belligerent act. What constitutes a belligerent act? Is that sticking out your tongue at a police officer when you're in a protest? Is that a belligerent act? Of course. <clears throat> in, in New York now, just for annoying a police officer, they want to give you a felony charge. If, you're, if these communications are encrypted, here's why. They cannot necessarily break all encryption today without applying massive computing power to it. But this way, their, their attitude is, well, if it's encrypted, it must be something they don't want us to see. So we get to hold it indefinitely until we have the computing power, right? And, and we'll talk a little bit about that later because there's a brand new scary feature that Google just got. But uh, we're talking quantum computers, qubit quantum, quantum computing. And that can break any code in seconds. Not years now, seconds, okay? So what they're going to do is hold on to all the encrypted data until such time as they have the computing power to tear it apart or a reason to think that maybe that particular person, after many other contacts and, 
and touches might have something to hide or are believed to contain any information relevant to cybersecurity. So if you ever mention even the word anonymous or searched an anonymous website, you're hit. This is unbelievable, America. Treason has come home to roost in your living room. We'll be right back. The Battery Station in West Plains is your headquarters for getting and being prepared. Natural disaster, civil unrest, personal and family protection, long-term sustenance, and most importantly, peace of mind. Berkey bottles and home-sized water purification systems, survival food, MREs, freeze-dried food, survival knives, lanterns, ammunition, military sleep systems, and of course, batteries of all shapes and sizes. Take charge of your own survival and security. The Battery Station, 303 Washington in West Plains, 417-257-7799 or BatteryStation.com. I had this illness that really made me powerless over alcohol and that insisted that I got drunk. And so I got drunk. It doesn't have anything to do with trying to control it. An alcoholic who picks up the first drink will pick up the second drink. I can't say to anyone, no, 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 don't drink. But I can say that when you decide you don't want to drink, come to AA. The door to AA is always open. Alcoholics Anonymous. It works. Look us up. Check your phone book, newspaper, or AA.org. Hey, get over to see our friends over at Spring Creek Beef. A uh, brand new website out there we just finished developing for them, Spring Creek Beef. Uh, they've got some brand new photos we'll be posting up, of course, uh, of their actual farm in the next couple of weeks as well. SpringCreekBeef.com. They have a um, natural grass-fed uh, beef that is grass-fed from start to finish. No additives, no preservatives, no uh, antibiotics, no hormones, nothing. Uh, they ship nationwide. Make sure that you get a hold of our friend Jane over there and order some of her beef. When you cook a pound of her, her ground beef, you actually get an entire pound out of the end of it. Not a whole lot of water you got to pour off and fat, right? Spring, SpringCreekBeef.com. Also, our friends over at Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance have blown open their brand new website. We just finished that for them. It is OzarkSurvivalGear.com. OzarkSurvivalGear.com. Make sure that you jump over there and take a quick look at that. Uh, they have a ton of products over there, everything from long-term food and storage to camping to self-reliance, self-sufficiency, survival products, a ton of different things. Make sure that you get over there. It's a brand-new e-commerce website. You can order right online. They ship nationally. Okay, so <clears throat> here's where we are, people. This gets even uglier, and it gets even worse. They can... Uh, that's only bullet point two. Um, by the way, retain and make use of inadvertently acquired domestic communications if they contain usable intelligence information on criminal activity, threat of harm to people or property, are encrypted, or are believed to contain any information relevant to cybersecurity. Now, let's just take that, and uh, we broke that sentence down, but let's take it in its totality. Here's the way you have to understand this. Critical thinkers, here we go. Retain and make use of inadvertently acquired domestic communications if they contain... Stop right there. If they contain, how do you know what they contain unless you're looking and listening to everything that's going down the pipe? How do you know what to retain if you haven't listened to it already? This is the, the equivalent of the Patriot Act sneak and peek search parameter, search allowance. Here's what that says. <clears throat> if you suspect someone of a terroristic activity, if you suspect that someone is doing something illegal, you can go in without a warrant, obtain the evidence that you need to then go get a warrant, and then go back with the warrant and seize the evidence to prove the person's guilty. I don't know about you, but that's an absolute Fourth Amendment violation. That is, they call it a sneak and peek. It's no secret. Go look it up. It's all over about. This has been the Patriot Act since 2000. I know for a fact that it exists because they used one on me. You see, here's the problem. Our government does everything and operates everything as a secret. Everything now is a national secret. Everything. And they claim secretive re restrictions on the release of all, all kinds of information. But what you have to be aware of is the fact that they can actually monitor. They must. How else would they know that they may retain that information if they haven't looked, listened, and watched everything? They don't know what to retain, so they have to monitor it all, which means... 
what does that really mean? It means they're saving it all because there's not enough employees in the NSA and all these other super secret spy agencies to keep a track of all and look at this stuff in real time. So what they're going to do is store it all and then peel through it as they can. Meanwhile, that which they can't prove already has contains usable intelligence information on criminal activity, threat of harm to people or property, or is encrypted or is believed to contain any information relevant to cybersecurity, they'll, dis, they'll, they'll uh, dismiss. Are you got to be kidding me? You see, their own words show the truth of what they're really doing. You can't tell me that they can figure out how what to retain and what not to retain unless they've already monitored it. So where's the provision? Well, there is a provision, and it comes later, <laughs> that says they can hold on to it forever. Well, they can hold on to it five years. Keep data that could potentially contain details of U.S. persons for up to five years. So that bullet point covers the next bullet point, which says... They can retain and make use of inadvertently acquired domestic community. Here we go. Get it? When you put the two together, they read very clearly. We can retain and make use of inadvertently acquired domestic communications, which potentially contain details of U.S. persons for up to five years, if they contain usable intelligence information. If you just string the two together, it makes perfect sense. They can keep everything, go through it at their leisure, and then determine later, as, when, and if, within five-year period, they, can just, they, they need to destroy it or they can hold on to it. And I guarantee you, by the time, by the time five years goes by, they will have passed some other uh, window of legislation that allows it to be held for another five, maybe ten, maybe indefinite, on some vague suspicion, you know, that it's got the letter A somewhere in the body of it. <clears throat> I mean, come on, people. Next bullet. Uh, this is so outrageous. I, I was going to do a whole section today on, on, on other things, but th this news that's breaking this morning is so is so important for us to understand the depth and the breadth and the scope of this treason. I can't, I, I mean, it's inconceivable that this is actually the United States of America. Preserve foreign intelligence information contained within attorney-client communications. How do we go around this? Do, do you hear this? They can preserve foreign intelligence information that's contained within, within privileged attorney-client communications. Now, when your attorney and you have a relationship, that is attorney-privileged client information. No one can make that attorney spill the information out. They can't make him, they can't drag him into court and make him act as a witness against you. You can sit there and tell your attorney, I committed murder, and there's not a damn thing he can do. If he tells that the, 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 you admitted that to him, he'll be disbarred and tossed out. And yet the NSA and how many other myriad agencies of psychophants have access to this information and can use it against you. And remember, it doesn't just inc it ju this doesn't just cover uh, the the issues of of uh, terrorism. This covers remember information on criminal activity. the The bullet point right above it said retain and make use of inadvertently acquired domestic communications if they contain usable intelligence information on criminal activity. You see. If you could string this all together and make one paragraph out of it, and it would basically cover every living, breathing human being from birth to death, every communication, every email, every phone call, every fax they've ever sent or received, every TV show they watch, everything that they do on the Internet, every search they make, every word they've ever read, every word they've ever spoken on radio. Starting to get the picture, folks? We're not even through. This gets worse. Access the content of communications gathered from, quote, U.S.-based machines, key operative word, machines, or U.S. Fo or phone numbers in order to establish targets 
uh, I'm sorry, to establish if targets are located in the U.S. for the purposes of ceasing further surveillance. All right, let's break this one down. Access the content of communications gathered from U.S.-based machines or phone numbers in order to establish if targets are located in the U.S. for the purposes of ceasing further surveillance. All right, so <clears throat> the the proponents of this will say, oh, well, that's, that's, that's acceptable because this is just to determine if we should stop monitoring. Stop right there. Did you hear the phrase right before that? U.S.-based machines or phone numbers. Okay, let's understand what a machine is. A machine, first of all, is a broad category that covers everything from your refrigerator, which now these new refrigerators, you plug them into your phone socket, and they call out to tell you to buy milk, right? This covers your car. You know the one that they're advertising right now that gives you updates that says, hey, it's time for an oil change and you had, ought to have your tires rotated? <clears throat> So, by the way, is the automated GPS device in your car. So they can capture and, and monitor U.S.-based machines. Everything is a machine, from the postage stamp thing in your, in your office, from your postal meter, to your refrigerator, to your dishwasher. Do you get the picture here? Your computer, everything, your cell phone, your tablet, everything that has a communication capability falls under machine. The only thing that this doesn't cover is they haven't figured out a way to stick a probe straight into your gray matter and suck out your own personal secret. I mean, come on. And that's coming next, by the way. Google just told us in 30 years they'll be able to upload your brain. So they'll be able to know what girl you had a secret crush on in sixth grade. Come on. What the heck are we talking about? This stuff makes 1984 look like old news. America, it, I, I cannot stress hard and strong enough. You know, Glenn Beck asked yesterday, I caught a piece of his show. I don't listen to his show every day, all day, because it's a three-hour show and i got to make a living. But i got to tell you, I listened to a piece of it yesterday because I was traveling. And he was talking about this this IRS thing they did in Washington the other day, and how it you know it was he expected it to be a few hundred people, and it was really lots and lots and lots of thousands of people. I don't know what the final count was. <clears throat> and one of the things that he was talking about is that when he's not quite sure what we should do to change the paradigm of the direction that we're heading. And I heard Mark Levin yesterday also say that he's prohibited from his, by his producer from telling the exact details of what he's going to do. But he's going to release a new book or some, I'm not sure what it is, in the next couple of weeks about what we can do about what's going on. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I already told you what it is. I published it a couple of months ago. It's called 90 Days That Will Change the World. And I'm going to tell you the only way that we're going to resolve this is not for, you know, 50,000 or 100,000 people to march on Washington and tell them that we don't want to be targeted by the IRS. Not even a million people to go out there and go to a 912 rally. I'm not dis I I'm not Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not knocking any of that. But what I am saying is that that is a step too short to accomplish the goal. What needs to happen is 25 million Americans need to march on Washington and stand there and say, we will not leave until you do. We are taking our nation back by peaceful, massive, civil disobedience. And we need to do it in such a massive way that no one can ignore it. No ministry of propaganda can pretend it's not happening. They cannot hide the news, no matter what rock you live under, on, in what desert, that everyone globally will know that the United States, the pillar of life and freedom and the gateway to barring evil from entering the world, has said, we have had enough. America, where do you stand? 
how much longer will you allow tyranny to creep into your very being? I don't know how to impress upon you the urgency of your awakening. Radio. I'm Paul Stevens. An amendment increasing border security for the Senate's Gang of Aid Immigration Reform Bill, doubling the border patrol, adding more fencing and maybe more yes votes as well. It will be enough to bring, uh, we think, uh, anywhere between 8 and uh, 13 or 14 new members along. Arizona Republican Senator Jeff Flake, no comment yet from the White House. Multiple reports out of Boston saying an arrest warrant has been issued for New England Patriots tied in Aaron Hernandez. That warrant, sources say, is for obstruction of justice involving a murder investigation. Police looking at surveillance video. One surveillance video shows Hernandez and two men returning home here Monday morning between 3 and 3.30. It was later Monday afternoon when the victim's body was found about a mile away from here. WFXT's Catherine Parada in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. NBA final Last night, Miami beat San Antonio in Game 7, 95 to 88. Fox News. We report, you decide. Thanks to Jason over at Wits End Classic Barbershop for sponsoring our phone lines. You can call our Wits End Classic Barbershop hotline, and uh, you can get over there and get yourself shaved and a haircut. Two bits. Well, a little bit more than two bits. Thanks to our friends over at Pizza Hut as well. On Porter Wagoner Boulevard, they have an outstanding lunch special. And on Tuesday nights, they have Kids Eat Free. Children under 12 eat for free. They're on Porter Wagoner Boulevard in West Plains. Make sure you visit Pizza Hut. Our friends at the Battery Station, 303 Washington Avenue at BatteryStation.com. You can also reach them via telephone at 257-7799. Folks over at West Plains Pawn and Gun. Kenny's a friend of ours and a great supporter of our program. 417-256-3000, located uh, about a mile and a half on Route 160 past Walmart. You can reach him also on the web at westplainspawn.com. Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance, half mile east of Walmart at Route 62 in Mountain Home. You can find them on the web at ozarkmtnselfreliance.com. And you can call them at 870-492-4030. My friend Mary over at Chantilly's Artisan Bakery, the best damn bakery in 100 miles. She can be reached at 417-255-2253. You can also find her at number 2 Evans Arcade. Outstanding Bakery. Bill Stone over at Stone Construction at 2930116. Whether remodeling, building new, or doing some kind of custom construction, like commercial or farm work, Bill's the guy for you. 2930116. Kim Commando, a.k.a. the Digital Goddess, keeps you plugged in with a daily feature. Kim Commando's Digital Minute. This segment keeps you informed with what's going on in the technology world, along with new tips and tricks to use at home to improve those computer skills. Catch Commando at 722 a.m. during Cooper & Company on the Ozarks Best News Talk. If the feature has you craving more, join Kim, the Digital Goddess, Saturdays from noon to 3 on the Ozarks Best News Talk, 1071 The Point. Weather sponsorships are now available on News Talk 1071 The Point. Get more information, email info at diamondmediaradio.com for complete details. From the Point Weather Center, for this morning with a partly cloudy sky, mostly sunny through the day with a slight chance for a thunderstorm, high 88, partly cloudy tonight, low 68. Tomorrow's going to be a mostly sunny day, high near 90, plenty of sunshine on Sunday, high 88. I'm staff meteorologist Jim Rinaldi, and for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. At Missouri State University West Plains, students are finding new beginnings and endless possibilities. Hi, I'm Dane Frigga, and I'm a student at Missouri State West Plains. I love going to school at West Plains campus. Being able to be involved in student organizations is a plus and makes the college experience more enjoyable. Call Missouri State West Plains today to find out how we can help you achieve your educational goals. Registration is going on now, 255-7255. Or check us out on the web, wp.missouristate.edu. You know, the language they use, the way in which they twist this stuff, is specifically geared and designed 
to give them loopholes so that they can get around Fourth Amendment limitations. I just just listen to some of the language here. <clears throat> this is from a warrant by the uh, that that. Uh, um, it's a one paragraph order, by the way. This is not some like long legal dissertation that's 30 pages long like you would get out of the Supreme Court with a lot of rational uh, rationale and or uh, legal justification. This is a one paragraph statement. NSA determines whether a person is a non-United States person reasonably believed to be outside the United States in light of the totality of the circumstances based on the information available with respect to that person, including information concerning the communications facility or facilities used by that person. You know, I can think of a billion reasons why this gives wide open access to everything. Because, first of all, the Internet is not a straight line path and stuff gets bounced and routed through routers globally in the first place. So uh, there are some, some, and I'll get to it in a minute, there are some issues that go that d- determine how you can identify a U.S. person. The primary is by your IP address. And for those of you that are not network proficient, your IP address is basically a return address, just like you would put on your envelope. It stands for Internet Protocol. And every one, every computer has one. When you're connected to the Internet, your IP address determines how information who sent the request out to Google or Yahoo or wherever, and how they can how they can route that information back to you specifically when you ask to see a search on you know gorillas, right? So the point is that the NSA makes the determination whether a person is a non-United States person who is reasonably believed to be outside the United States in light of the totality of the circumstances, based on the information available with respect to that person, including information concerning the communication facility or facilities used by that person. Okay, so what that means is basically this. If your information gets routed around through the web, they have the opportunity to say, well, it hit a foreign server, therefore we might be able to pick this up and come up with another loophole that would allow us to retain it, number one. Number two, anyone who uses a proxy... And a proxy, I don't want to get into the technical long, the, the, a long dissertation on proxies, but a lot of people use a proxy as security. So what happens is you have a direct connection with a server that for all intents and purposes is outside the United States of America because it, it, it's theoretically supposed to avoid this kind of snooping. And so what happens is your route, your, your IP address connects directly to an IP address in, let's say, Germany. Then all of your communications are routed from that German IP address, so it looks as if... You are in Germany. Bingo! They've got everything. Now, here's the, one of the biggest loopholes they have. <clears throat> they, uh, uh, by the way, they, and they do clarify, it says, the in, the, the, it includes information that the NSA analyst uses to make this determination, including IP address, which is why you could have a German IP address using a, a proxy. Statements made by the potential target and other information in the NSA databases, which include public information and data collected by other agencies. Where the NSA has no specific information on a person's location, analysts are free to presume they are overseas. It appears later in this document that if a target is in fact located in the U.S., Analysts are permitted to look at the content of their information, messages, listen to phone calls to establish if this is indeed the case. So this goes back to my first point, which is that they can and do listen to everything. Then they can use and then they can say, well, we had to listen to determine if this was really a U.S. based operative and therefore we're not entitled to monitor him. But since while we were listening, we caught a keyword that looks like he might potentially be a terrorist, put him over there in the hard drive file, file, uh, filing cabinet, and we'll get a look at it, all of his information later. Put him on a watch list. You get it? If this is the biggest circle jerk I've ever seen. It's a 100% circle. <laughs> NSA, this, this is their dot. This is their words, not mine, folks. NSA analysts may analyze content for indications that a foreign target has entered 
or intends to enter the United States. Such content analysis will be conducted according to analytic and intelligence requirements and priorities. What does that mean? That means that there's no boundaries whatsoever because their requirements and priorities are policy that they can change literally minute by minute. See, that's what happens when you lose the rule of law. Things become subjective instead of objective. Objective means that it's consistent and, and, and across the board applied. Subjective means that, in this case, that they can sit there and say, well, we're going to make an exception for the next hour. <laughs> Get it? It's policy. It's not law. And when you talk about policy, it's subject to the whim of whatever supervisor is working that afternoon. They have a minimization procedure that's usually talked about in House and, and Senate hearings, right? This is what we keep hearing. Oh, we have these minimization procedures. <laughs> Communications, uh, all right, the NSA is empowered to retain data for up to five years. And the policy, here are their words, the policy states, communications which may be retained include electronic communications acquired because of limitations on the NSA's ability to filter communications. So all they got to do is say, we couldn't filter it, so we have it. And we can hold it for up to five years. Why couldn't they filter it? Oh, I don't know. Bob wasn't well enough trained on that particular device that day. Don't you see? There are so many loopholes here. There's no boundaries. There are no limitations. There are no fences. There is nothing that can keep you safe from them. Even if, after all of this, some analyst is stupid enough to say, hey, this is a U.S. citizen, we shouldn't be doing this. Even though he's been given a thousand opportunities to say, well, he is a U.S. citizen, but we can do it anyway. Here's, the, here's, here's where the kicker comes in. The NSA can appeal to its director to keep what it has found if it contains, quote, significant foreign intelligence information, evidence of a crime, Technical database information. What does that mean? It means your Excel spreadsheet that you attached that has your corporate budget, encrypted communications, or information pertaining to a threat of serious harm to life or property. What does that constitute? Your 15-year-old sent an email to his buddy that says, let's go over there and smack Mr. Jones' mailbox with a baseball bat today. He's always been mean to us, and he won't give us our baseball back when it lands in his backyard. Information pertaining to a threat of serious harm to life or property. You see, what's happening here, people, is they have every method any roadblock you put up they've got a way around you think you can box this mouse in with a maze but eventually they just come up with an alternate way to tunnel through the wall that you thought you used to block their path in other words this determination is all subjective based on the analyst who's paying who's who's doing it and his supervisor we don't even know who these people are. Whose oath have they sworn? They've sworn an oath of secrecy, not an oath to the Constitution. It's entirely, purely subject to their whim. I mean, people, this is so far-reaching. This makes... The worst fears that 1984 could generate look like a good dream, not a nightmare. 
This is so far outside the scope of anything we have ever encountered before. If we do not put an immediate stop to this, I don't want to hear another word about terrorism. This is terrorism. This is terrorism of the American people. And this overshadows any infinitesimal risk you have of being killed by a foreign terrorist. Make no mistake about it. They are the terrorists. And I make no bones about it. You shouldn't either. This is treason. T-R-E-A-S-O-N. Treason and tyranny. And you had better stop it now. If we don't do this, all bets are off. The Battery Station in West Plains is your headquarters for getting and being prepared. Natural disasters, civil unrest, personal and family protection, long-term sustenance, and most importantly, peace of mind. Berkey bottles and home-sized water purification systems, survival food, MREs, freeze-dried food, survival knives, lanterns, ammunition, military sleep systems, and of course, batteries of all shapes and sizes. Take charge of your own survival and security. The Battery Station, 303 Washington and West Plains, 417-257-7799 or BatteryStation.com. If you're looking for great deals on iPads or Kindles, look no further than your neighborhood Radio Shack Authorized Sales Center. They've got great deals on the latest iPads and Kindles. Maybe you need a new GPS or an MP3 player to get your music library ready for those barbecues. Whatever your electronic needs, stop by your local neighborhood Radio Shack Authorized Dealer in West Plains at 1408 Southern Hills Shopping Center or call 417-256-1819. I saw a penguin fly out of a U.S. cellular store with a new Samsung Galaxy smartphone. Sounds crazy, but U.S. Cellular's offering a hundred bucks off a new Samsung Galaxy phone. If that's crazy, I'm a loon. Switch to U.S. Cellular and say hello to the Galaxy S4 for only $99.99 or the Samsung Galaxy S3 for free. U.S. Cellular. Hello better. After $100 mail-in rebate that comes as a MasterCard debit card, applicable data plan required, new two-year agreement, and $35 device activation fee may apply. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Having difficulty with your computer? Do you think it has a mind of its own? Well, don't be alarmed. This happens to everyone at some point in time. Worry no more. No more. Computer Dave and Kyle can help you out with PC Geeks, a weekly show right here on 107.1 The Point. Tune in Thursdays at 1 o'clock to ask computer-related questions and listen to the web topic of the week. That's PC Geeks here on 107.1 The Point. Hey, get over to see Mary at Chantilly's Artisan Bakery. She's uh, right on uh, number two Evans Arcade, right on the square in West Plains, 255-2253. Uh, our friends over at Battery Station, 257-7799. If you listen to our communicate or our uh, episode the other day where we talked about these antidepressants, Kevin has a solution for you to help flush and, pl- and, and uh, purge that from your system. Make sure that you are getting off antidepressants, prescription drugs that you don't need, that aren't doing you any good. If you've got a life-saving medication, that's a whole different story. But let me tell you something. When 70% of America is taking a medicine, a prescribed drug, and 50% are taking more than one, something's desperately wrong. Why is it that the rest of the world isn't? You can get a hold of Kevin at the battery station at 257-7799 or 303 Washington Avenue in West Plains. All right. Um... Look, guys, what we're coming down to here is the long and the short of this thing is that we are so we are so subjugated right now that everything that is being told to you, every one of these hearings that you're watching where Congress is questioning these people, they are parsing their words so carefully. I saw an episode the other day where um where a, a congressman asked uh, that guy from the NSA, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, um, are you, do you have the capability to monitor every American? And you know what his answer was? Listen to how he parsed the words. No, we don't have that authority. Whoa, that's not what we asked you. What we asked you was, do you have the capability? And his answer was, no, we don't have that authority. Now, Listen to the way that that sounds. 
the answer, the first word that comes out of his mouth is no. Do you have the ability to monitor every American? No. Then he parses that with the, uh, we don't have that, what? Authority. We know that you don't have that authority. That's not the question. What we asked if you have the capability, and that is a completely different concept, a completely different thought process, and a completely different question. And you know he didn't answer it because he couldn't. He would have had to say yes. And here's the proof. You see, no one is going to prosecute these people. No one is going to charge them with perjury. No one is going to come to your defense. No one in government, no one in, in the NSA, no one in the House, no one in the Senate is going to come and save you. You are your own best advocate. There's no lawyer, there's no judge, there's no jury that's going to save you from this. There is only you. You are your own and best and only advocate. No one knows you or has your interests more at heart than you. And you are asleep. America, the time has come for each and every American, irrespective of political ideology, irrespective of your beliefs in religion, irrespective of your color, irrespective of the your sex, irrespective of your abilities or disabilities. The time has come for every single American to stand up, lock ourselves elbow to elbow, and destroy this tyranny. Notice, I did not say destroy this government, because our government is based on a constitution. The problem is they're just not following it. Massive, peaceful, civil disobedience on a scale never before conceived of. Two million people marched in Brazil yesterday. We've never seen two million people march in the United States of America. You know what they marched on in Brazil? Big government. Two million people globally marched against Monsanto. We've never had two million people march on anything. Everyone is affected by this. You can't say that I'm separated from this because of my political ideology. You can't say I'm separated from this and it doesn't affect me because of my color or my sex or my religious preferences or my sexual preferences, I might add. You can't say that this doesn't involve you. It does. In fact, you can't even say this doesn't involve me because I don't do anything wrong. You know why? Because if your friend does something wrong, if your business associate does something wrong, if your child, your mother, your father, your brother, your cousin, your sister, if someone that you have met one time and done a business deal with far, far away, 13, 25 states away from you, has done something wrong, they get to target you too. You know why? You're an associate. If someone who's liked your Facebook page does something wrong, you're in for it. If someone you've sent an email to five years ago does something wrong now, you're on the hook. 
Don't you see how broad this is? If someone that you had a phone call with six months ago about buying a tractor or an automobile or a rifle, if that person is subsequently found to have been a target because you communicated with them, you are in their circle of influence and therefore you are now targeted. Just imagine how far this goes. There's no limits. I'm just going to play a hypothetical scenario out for you for just a second because we've got about five minutes left. And I want you to just think about this. And then I want you to allow your imagination to give you your own scenario. Purely hypothetical. You were at a gun show. You were at a gun show a year ago. You met a guy on there who said he had this firearm that he wanted to sell, but he hadn't brought it with him. And so you said, well, just email me some pictures of it when you get back home, and I'll, I'll take a look at it. And you agreed to buy it. You send him some money. He sends you the gun over to your, your local federal firearms dealer, which is the federal law, by the way. Unlike everybody out there trying to tell you that you can have a gun shipped to your house, that's a lie. Somebody ships a gun to your house, somebody's going to jail. So you, in turn, have the gun shipped to your local FFL dealer. You go over there, you fill out a 4473. You've already paid for the gun. You give the dealer 25 bucks as a courtesy, and he'll walk off with your gun. You go out there, and you shoot a deer with it next year, and, boy, things are hunky-dory. You're so happy. You got a great deal. Turns out, this guy in another state is being monitored because... He's got a relative overseas somewhere who he's communicated with. And they're capturing his data inadvertently. <laughs> I mean, listen, here's the deal, folks. Suddenly, your communication with him is picked up. And now they have to track that back. So the next thing they do is they start monitoring your information. You've done nothing wrong. But suddenly, now they start looking into your skirt. Now suddenly they want to look in your underwear. Are you starting to get the picture of how this works? It doesn't matter that you didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't matter that you, you completely did this transaction 100% within the law and completely innocent of his knowledge or his involvement in some other nefarious plot you had no idea about. You don't even know who the guy is. I'm going to give you another scenario. Hypothetical two, you meet a guy at a trade show. You guys exchange cards. He's got a product that you would like to buy. He takes your card, you take his. You both get back, you send an email to each other. Hey, Joe, it was nice to meet you at that trade show we went to. I'm really more interested in learning more about that product that you have. Do me a favor and send me some email about it. Give me a brochure and a, and a, and a rate sheet on it so I can take a quick look at it. And you and he communicate a couple times over email, maybe a few phone calls. You cut a deal. Maybe you don't cut a deal. It doesn't even really matter. He, on the other hand, has donated some money to a questionable group. Maybe a Tea Party group. Maybe Hamas. I don't know. But you see, suddenly... Now you have a connection to him. And now it's wide open for them to look at you. Capture and store everything that you do and sift through it later. Meanwhile, they come up with an email where you and your brother were discussing the fact that if that guy doesn't give my son's bicycle back that he stole out of the front yard yesterday, I'm going to go over there and beat the tar out of him. Boom! You're hit! Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice day. You're listening to America's Voice now. My name is Michael Evans. You can find us on the web at americasvoicenow.org. You can find all of our postings up at YouTube, I'm sorry, Facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. And this and every episode 
at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice now. We are the Ozark's best news talk, KBMV Birch Tree.